You ever seen a ghost? Been abducted? Heard your name whispered from the other room when you're all alone? No, you say? Me either. But if you're like me, you're still fascinated by the paranormal. It seems everyone else has had an experience, and you want to believe it all. So why doesn't it happen to us? What does it all mean? How does it work? Is any of it real? Welcome to Paranorm Girl, a show that will attempt to answer these questions by taking the paranormal completely apart in search of proof. I'm not a blind believer, nor a hardened skeptic. I'm just looking for answers and willing to accept what I find. Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. I recently got to sit down with someone that I met during season two when this show covered the Mandela Effect. River Zarinsky star is my go-to ME expert. River is a moderator for the well-known Mandela Effect subreddit and is involved in quite a few other important pursuits, as we'll learn during our discussion. On today's episode, we'll talk flip-flops, residue, some of the major effects, and the topic of personal Mandela effects that maybe most folks might brush off a little too easily. I entered season two with a healthy amount of skepticism, unsure of what I would find, but counting on finding a lot of nothing nonsense information. Instead, I came out of that season with a lot more questions than I had anticipated, and a real belief that there is indeed something going on here. A downright surprise to me. We go a little bit longer on this one, so going to be good for your commute or house cleaning. One thing to keep in mind as you listen, and you're just going to have to trust me on this. My guest has one hell of a memory. Please enjoy my conversation with Mandela Effect subreddit moderator and my friend, River. All right, everyone. Uh, please welcome to the show... River. River, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. A few months ago, for anybody that doesn't know, I, I got a chance to interview uh, Kristen on my Twitch channel. You know, I have a, a channel on Twitch where, you know, I play games, but I also made a lot of videos about the Mandela effect there. And so a few months ago, I had the idea, you know, that I should bring Kristen on. And so we got to talk for about two hours then. And so it's like now I'm getting to do the reverse of that. And now Kristen's getting to interview me. So this is really cool. <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm going to throw some things at you this time. No, I had a lot of fun uh, on that interview. That was so much fun. And we just just kept talking. Some interviews are like that. So. Um, with uh, For anyone listening, uh, I met River uh, back during season two when I was covering the Mandela effect. And River, I, I have referred to you as my resident Mandela effect expert. And uh, you were so kind as to put in suggestions for the upcoming season. And you actually won with your suggestion of ectoplasm. Uh, we're going to be covering the psychics and mediums on that one, and you won the giveaway. How's the coffee cup? Good? Well, um, I've had it about two weeks now. Most of that two weeks, uh, I've been with my grandmother, so I haven't actually had the chance to actually use it yet, but right now it's sitting behind uh, my computer, and uh, the next time I, you know, I, I brew me some coffee, which I'm sure will be in the next couple of weeks, because I drink coffee like five days out of the week. So it's going to be super nice that I get to drink the coffee out of the show promoting your podcast. So I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm excited for you. They're they're cool cups. I got one for myself too. So and I know how much you love coffee. I'm I'm really glad that you won. Um, so for anyone listening, uh, you might actually know River if you are interested at all in the Mandela Effect and have ever found yourselves on the Mandela Effect subreddit, r slash Mandela Effect. Uh, you might have talked to River because you are one of the moderators. How did that come about? Well, so I... I had been posting on the Mandela Effect subreddit about a year before I became a moderator, and I'd been lurking for two years before I even posted there. But uh, 
it, uh, when I, you know, originally found the Mandela Effect subreddit, you know, I was already a believer in the Mandela Effect at that time. I'd already have enough happen to me that I'm like, yeah, this is a real phenomenon. And so it was really cool to find the place where other people, you know, that agree with me that the Mandela Effect is real, you know, were, and, you know, could keep me up to date on effect. So about, it's been a good, wow, it's been over a year now, but, you know, I saw that uh, Epic Journeyman, who is the person that uh, runs uh, the Mandela Fett subreddit, you know, made a post. And, uh, you know, the post was saying, you know, we recently reached 200,000 members and uh, we are in need of some more moderators. And I'm like, well, you know, I already, you know, run a Twitch channel. I know what it's like to, to moderate that. You know, I make videos on the Mandela Effect. So I'm like, I'm the perfect person for this position. So I applied and I ended up getting the job. And I've really enjoyed having the job. Well, I, I don't think I could think of a better person for the job. You've been involved with the Mandela Effect for a long time. Um, and you've really committed some some time and research to it. When did you first become aware of this phenomenon and, and what got you interested in diving a little deeper? Well, you know, this, this goes back all the way to, and this is to take me a few minutes because there's a lot to unpack here, but this goes back all the way to when I was in elementary school. So this would have been like kindergarten, first, second grade. So when I, just after I started elementary school, you know, my, my mom and my grandmother had read to me from these books called the Berenstain Bears when I was little. They'd read to me from several other books but one of them that they read to me a whole lot from was the Berenstein Bears series. And so at my school library, you know, I was uh, checking out one of the books and I noticed that it said Berenstein Bears, you know, and I always thought it was Berenstein. You know, uh, at the time, you know, I didn't think much of it. You know, my mom and my grandmother both remembered it as Steen instead of Stain. But I'm like, well, you know, it's just like a, a name change for whatever reason. You know, like maybe there was some sort of trademark issue and, and they had to change the name. You know, I really didn't think anything of it. But, you know, after I, you know, graduated elementary school, then I started noticing some more things that, you know, just didn't add up. And uh, then, um, I had some more experiences um, that I will talk about later on, I'm sure, because you have way more questions for me. But then I, I thought back and I'm like, you know what? The Berenstain, uh, Berenstain Bears, that was definitely a Mandela Effect that I had. And it turned out after I joined the Mandela Effect subreddit, and now, of course, I'm a moderator there, it turned out that so many other people have had that same experience where they remember Berenstain Bears is Berenstain Bears. Yeah, that is a big one for people. And I, I don't even care. I still refer to it as the Bernstein Bears. It will always be Bernstein. Well, so, wow, that's, uh, that's a long time since, uh, you know, since school. Um, just curious for somebody who's so involved in it uh, and sees these, you know, all the time, especially being a moderator of that uh, page, does it bother or intrigue you when you discover something that has changed? I have to say both. Um, because there are some of these changes because I've had personal changes such as with my own yearbooks from school, interestingly enough. And so uh, those really do bother me because I know, you know, how it's supposed to be and how it was. But then there's some stuff that's intriguing about the Mandela Effect because it's like, okay, what is going on here? And it's kind of like a puzzle. And I'm hoping that before my lifetime is over that I will be able to figure out the answer to what exactly is going on. And my hope is as more Mandela Effects keep happening, that eventually more and more people, including, you know, like major scientists, are going to have to admit the Mandela Effect is a real phenomenon. It's not just a confabulation or false memories and uh, my hope is at that point then we'll be able as a you know as a planet to get to the bottom of what exactly is going on right right i think i would have to agree with you uh on the uh, both bothering me and intriguing at the same time for some of this stuff some some of it is outright infuriating um thinking about it and spiraling with it uh speaking of which interview with the vampire. You were kind enough to reach out one night when this one flip-flopped. I think you might have been one of my first indicators of the phenomenon 
of the ME flip-flop. Can you explain to us what a flip-flop is and tell us about some of your experiences with it? Oh, absolutely. And there are so many of these that I could talk about, but I want to start where you mentioned about the, the interview with the vampire flip-flop because This is one that happened, you know, just in the last few months. And so this is one that may be fresh on everybody's minds. But so uh, for me, uh, it did start out interview with the vampire. Like Like the name of it now is correct. That's the way it was for me growing up. But for several years, like I don't know if it would have been like 2016 or 2017, but somewhere in there, it switched from interview with the vampire to interview with a vampire. And of course, it stayed interview with a vampire till almost the end of 2021. Like no matter where you look, like whether it was the movie or whether it was the book series, it, all of it said interview with a vampire for like four to five years. That's how it was. And a lot of people When it was interviewed with a vampire, I don't have uh, enough memory to say for sure on this, but a lot of people remember the A was like dripping in blood, like 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 the other words interview with and vampire were just all in white. But when it was A instead of the like the A was like red for blood and it was dripping blood off the bottom of the A. And now that it's back to interview with the vampire, the is also white. And so there's nothing really that, you know, that pops in terms of color on you know the the movie dvd or the book so um that happened a few months ago but uh, you know segue into what exactly a flip-flop is a mandela effect flip-flop is something that, that is one way and then changes to something else and then maybe changes to even something else and then goes back to the original way or sometimes ends up a completely new way but it went through multiple variations before it got to what is next well, and you, uh, when I first met you, you talked about um, a, a name of an establishment that, uh, yeah. wow, flip, flip-flopped for you quite a few times. Can you talk about that? Yes, and uh, that's going to be uh, the restaurant Zaxby's. And interestingly enough, uh, out of the major, like, chicken restaurants, like, three out of five have these Mandela effects, which is kind of interesting. Hopefully, they never managed to change KFC, but if they do, oh, wow. But anyway, uh, Zatsby's was the big one for me. You know, I'm not sure if Zatsby's is, uh, you know, across the whole country, but we have them here in the southeast. Where I live in Alabama, there's Zatsby's all over the place. But anyway, Zatsby started out as Z-A-X-B-Y-S, no apostrophe. It was just Z-A-X-B-Y-S. That's how it started out. And then uh, I noticed that all of a sudden, a few years ago, there's an apostrophe on Zaxby's. And all of a sudden, it's Z-A-X-B-Y apostrophe S. And so at that time, you know, I'd already had some Mandela Fett experiences, such with uh, the, the Berenstein, Berenstein Bears. And so I'm like, I, I knew immediately when I was uh, in the drive-thru that night, when I first noticed it at Zaxby's, I knew immediately that this was a Mandela effect. And so I'm like, okay. So the first thing I do is I go to the internet. I look at old news articles. You know, I'm like, okay, surely there's something backing me up, you know, showing that it didn't used to have an apostrophe. And so uh, no matter where I look, um, all the official sources, like the the website, um, the, the U.S. trademark website, all have it now with apostrophe. But I did manage to find at that time some newspaper articles um, that showed it with no with no apostrophe, just the H B Y S, and uh, I documented these in a video on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash r r r r z z z z. So just go to twitch.tv slash four lowercase r's, four lowercase z's, and uh, you'll find all my videos on Zaxby's. I've done more than one. I think I've done three on Zaxby's now. But so I had the experience within it was. Um, had the apostrophe in it, but then uh, about a month after that happened, all of a sudden, it's back to not having the apostrophe. You know, I I passed Zatsby's one day, and I see on the sign, uh, and and it's not just one sign I'm looking at. They've got the tall sign on the pole, but they literally have two signs on the building as well, and so I get three signs to look at, two on the building and one on the pole. All of them say Zatsby's without the apostrophe. Well, um, I had to to run an errand, so um, I went to run the errand on my way back home. I passed by Zatsby's literally 15 minutes later. 
everything is back to having an apostrophe. And again, it's not like I mislooked it, because if I did, I would have had to mislook it three different times, which I didn't. And so um, it, it's back to having the, uh, the apostrophe. And uh, then I had one more experience uh, uh, about a month after that, where I was actually at Zaxby's, and when I get served my food, I'm looking down at the wrapper on my straw, and I see that there's no apostrophe on the wrapper. So I immediately look up at the sign on the restaurant. There's an apostrophe on it. I look at the sign on the pole. There's an apostrophe on it. Th that takes me five seconds. I look back down at my straw, and all of a sudden now there's an apostrophe on my straw wrapper when five seconds before there was not an apostrophe. And a lot of people say, oh, the people like me that believe in the Mandela effect, they're just mislooking things. But I am not going to mislook something that I'm literally holding in my hand like one foot in front of my eyes. There's just no way I'm going to mislook that. And it's interesting about Zaxby's because two other chicken chains, I mentioned three out of the five major ones, have a Mandela effect. Chick-fil-A, that's a big one for a lot of people. I remember Chick-fil-A starting out when I was growing up as C-H-I-K-Filet. A lot of people remember it as C-I-C-Filet. And, of course, there are some people that remember it how it is now, C-H-I-C-K-Filet. But I always remember Chick was misspelled. And uh, Popeye's is another one. And it's kind of uh, uh, the reverse of Zaxby's because Popeye's is another one that uh, I remember having the apostrophe on Popeye's. But unlike Zaxby's, where it went from no apostrophe to apostrophe, Popeye's went from having the apostrophe to not having the apostrophe. Well, I'm glad you brought that one up. Um, when we're talking about things like the apostrophe or lack of the apostrophe in Zaxby's, in Popeye's, when we're talking about a small change from the to uh to the in, in Interview with the Vampire, a lot of these effects are considerably small. You know, we're talking about these small things, small adjustments. Why should people be paying closer attention? Because it can do a whole lot more. And this is where I'm going to talk about uh, two of the big ones. So there's this movie that so many people remember, and the movie was called Shazam. And it was a movie that so many people remember starred Sinbad as a genie. And, and, like, there's even a whole website that details out, like, the whole plot of this movie and, like, tons of lines that all the characters say, like, in photographic detail when there never was this movie called Shazam. A few years ago, there was a different movie called Shazam, but there was never any movie that came out in the 90s that involved the genie called Shazam. And so many people remember specifically during the 90s watching this movie there's so many replications of what people remember the dvd looked like there are even skits on youtube where people have acted out scenes of this movie when this movie never existed and of course uh, that shows that this can do a whole lot more than just uh, changing names or spellings and for me, which I want to talk about more here in a few minutes, I've had a lot of changes with my yearbooks. And that tells me that the Mandela effect is capable of making changes in your own life. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned the yearbook because I did want to talk to you about some of the personal glitches that have taken place for you. Um, most everyone is familiar with the well-known effects, the Monopoly guy, Fruit of the Loom, the Ford logo but are not all that aware that we can, on a personal level, be experiencing the Mandela effect in our own lives. What are some of those recent experiences you've been having? Well, there's a few big ones from my yearbooks. And this really started out, and this is what convinced my mom, and this besides Zaxby's was the big one for me. So that was this um, employee at my school. And um, uh, I remember uh, her uh, vividly because her name was Miss Friend, and it was a very unique name to have. Her name was Miss Friend, and she really was a kind person. She really was a friend, and I always thought that's amazing that, you know, that she ended up with the name Miss Friend. Like, that's cool. Her family named her that. Well, uh, Miss Friend was the teacher's aide at, at my school, and that would have been uh, – during my second grade year. I'm 100% sure I know Miss Friend was the teacher's aide, and it was during my second grade year when I was in elementary school. Well, a few years after, you know, I, I graduate from elementary school, 
I noticed that Miss Friend is nowhere to be found in my yearbooks. And uh, my mom, you know, when I was in elementary school, you know, she made sure that I took a picture with every staff member at the school. So, you know, when I, you know, grew up, I would have all these pictures so I could remember all the staff members from my elementary school. And that was super nice of her. Well, we go through all uh, her photos that she took. We go through all the yearbooks. And Miss Friend is just nowhere to exist. So it gets bizarre because, so it was like that for a good over six months. Well, there was just no Miss Friend at all. And then Miss Friend shows up, but she's now an intern instead of being uh, the teacher's aide. And it's during my first grade year, not my second grade year. And, uh, you know, she, um, she has one picture on the, uh, the first grade page but her picture was originally with all the other staff members. So they have a whole section of the yearbook when you open it after the introduction that is just for staff members of the school. And that's where she was. You didn't have to go looking through all the rest of the yearbook to find her. She was right there with the staff members. And to this day, she's not there. But it gets a little bit more weird than that because after, you know, after she showed up, uh, you know, as the intern, me and my mom once again looked through all my mom's pictures, and this is what's so weird. She is on a pamphlet that my mom made because my mom is a teacher, and so she has spoke at a few conferences, and each time she did, she made a pamphlet for the conference, and uh, she talked about me a lot, you know, during her conferences, and so um, there's a picture of Miss Friend that's on one of the brochures for one of the conferences, but yet in none of the PowerPoints that she actually presented on, uh, at the conferences, Miss Friend is in none of them, despite having direct quotes from the PowerPoint in the brochure. So it's kind of like you have a situation where two or three different realities are merging, and that's just so big. That's what convinced my mom that this is going on. But there is a couple more from my yearbooks while we're on the subject that I have to mention. And the next one, which is so big, is swim class. And I know that not everybody, you know, is going to have a, a swim class at their elementary school, but my elementary school, there was, there was a swimming pool right down the hill from it, and so we had swim class. Now, in uh, my reality, that was third grade through sixth grade, so third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, we had swim class, but not before third because the pool was four feet deep. Well, so a few years ago, I discovered that all of a sudden, according to my yearbooks, we started swim class in first grade. So I'm like, all right, I, I still know a couple of my classmates. I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to ask them about this. Well, it's interesting because there was one of my classmates that remembered like I did. We started in third. And another that said, oh, no, we started swim class in first. So that was really odd. Well, fast forward to just about a month ago. We now started swim class in kindergarten, so not even first grade. Like immediately when I got there in a four-foot deep pool, they apparently in this timeline, they now literally trusted five-year-olds to be in that pool, a pool that's four foot deep. And I'm like, that just doesn't add up at all. And it so happens I still have my swimsuit from when I was in elementary school. And uh, so I got out my swim trunks, and they are pretty large. And I've showed them to my friends. and. Everybody that looked at them said there's no way in kindergarten or first grade that I could have fit into my own swim trunks without them falling off because they're too big. And so that right there is proof to me that I did, in fact, start swim class in third grade, which is what I remember. And, of course, there's one more I have to mention. I remember my elementary school never had any sports teams. I went to a small private elementary school that just had one of each grade. And we never had enough people to do sports. Well, there have been several changes with that. A few years ago, I discovered all of a sudden we had a basketball team in my yearbooks. Then uh, for a while, we had a basketball and a baseball team. Then the baseball team went away, and it was back to just basketball. And now we have a basketball and a soccer team, but no baseball. So there have been several changes uh, with my yearbooks regarding that. So many have happened in your life. Um, you, you've brought uh, a lot of them to my attention, both these personal ones and, and big ones, you know, uh, famous ones, too. How, <laughs> how do you keep it all straight? Well, I have a lot that I keep in my email where, you know, every time I've noticed like a big Mandela effect, you know, I've made an email or that 
you know, I listed what the Mandela effect was. And of course, the emails are dated and time stamped. And so all I have to do in my email is, is type in a specific effect in my archive and uh, I can find any emails that I've sent involving that effect. Got you, got you, and I'm 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 just realizing now, I I should have asked this before, so it's going to seem out of place. Starry RZ is is a username you you frequently use. Yeah, with. that's my username from uh, the Mandela Fett subreddit, and it it comes from my name. I am River Zarensky Star, and so um, Starry RZ is kind of like my uh, my name shortened but only backwards. I got you. All right, so um. This is interesting. You recently had an interesting experience with Fruit Loops. This is an effect, what, what you talked about, what you told me. Um, this is an effect I, I hadn't heard of before. And, and before you go into it, folks listening, um, it's, this is probably not going to be what you're expecting it. So what was that experience, River? Well, uh, first of all, before I get into that, how had you not heard of the Fruit Loops Mandela effect before you got into season two? Because that's like one of the top five biggest ones. Now, the Fruit Loops Mandela effect I was familiar with that I learned about was the actual spelling, which is a flip flop in itself. It goes back and forth for people. But what you were talking yep. about is something completely different. Yeah, China. So this is what gets interesting. So for me, of course, I've had the, the spelling of Fruit Loops as well, like that, of course, in this, this kind of relates to that. So for me, I just have to say that Fruit Loops did start out the way it is now for me, F-R-O-O-T Loops. And I know a lot of people started out in the F-R-U-I-T timeline, but for me, I started off, you know, in the four O's, the two in Fruit and the two in Loops. And I remember um, that would have been around 2015 when I remember for a few months, it changed at that time to UIT. And I remember at that time vividly that there was a lawsuit at that time because there was a, a court case that Kellogg's had got sued because Fruit Loops, you know, was named F-R-U-I-T Loops. And people said, hey, it's artificial. There's no real fruit in it. And uh, you can't call it Fruit Loops. And that lawsuit didn't exist when it was the, just the double O's because it's not spelled like fruit. Well, fast forward a few months, you know, and this is still in 2015 or early 2016 at this point. All of a sudden, it's back to F-R-O-O-T loops, and there's no indication that that lawsuit was ever a thing. Right? In this timeline, that lawsuit was now never a thing. But it gets weird because now we fast forward all the way to April 15th of 2022, just a couple weeks ago this year. Um, I saw an ad, you know, I, I first of all, I follow um, – this company called but wait i'm hungry on instagram and they are a company where they will deliver snacks and sodas and things like that to your door and they sell fruit loops and so i saw you know i was on the but wait i'm hungry page on instagram and they had an ad for fruit loop cereal straws and i realized that this, i was looking at this ad and it says f-r-u-i-t loops but what's interesting about when it said f-r-u-i-t loops all the letters were in white because as it is now with the, the, the four O's, each of the O's is a color like in the loops. You have a yellow one and a blue one and a green and a purple. But the other letters are white. And uh, there were only the two colored O's when it, the ad said, you know, Fruit Loops, U-I-T. It, all the other letters were white and the whole word fruit was white. So like for a good 20 seconds, this ad says F-R-U-I-T. And then I'm like, okay, I, I, I have to go show this to my mom because this is one we both had. And when I go pull it up to show her, it's back to F-R-O-O-T loops. And now it says F-R-O-O-T loops, cereal straws. And, of course, it's back to the four colored O's, not just only two colored O's and just white letters. So that was a very weird experience. And, you know, the Fruit Loops one happened so long ago that, you know, I was genuinely surprised that another change involving Fruit Loops would happen for me literally just this year in April 2022. Yeah, and this stuff seems to be happening to you um, often in, in real time. I remember being especially afraid um, while I was doing season two because I, I was having my own existential crisis with it, going through the causes and the theories and what that could mean. And the thought occurred to me, and it was a very frightening thought, if I start seeing this stuff happen literally before my eyes, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
So that's really incredible that that can happen for you and be that confirmation for you. Um, you did also tell me about a, uh, a really incredible change to a very well-known song. Though it's small, uh, it kind of floored me. After you told me about it, I, I even took it to my extremely Mandela effect skeptical roommate, and he got it wrong. Um, it was also intriguing to me because it's one that did not surface until just this year, but is a song that most people are going to know, and it's kind of old by now. Walk us through that one. Well, um, interestingly enough, I was born in 1999, so I'm very familiar with this song, and Prince was one of my mom's top five favorite artists. So all the time, me and my mom listened to Prince. Like We listened to Prince like easily at least once every two weeks. So I'm constantly hearing Prince songs. Well, just a few months ago, just in this year, 2022, I was actually on the YouTube channel, maybe it's Mandela, you know, and uh, there are several YouTube channels that cover Mandela effects as well as on Twitch and on Reddit. So, I, you know, I'm constantly looking at what everybody else is reporting because, you know, I want to make sure that I stay up to date because sometimes I'll be the first to see one, but other times it'll be somebody else. And I see it's a movie on uh, 1999. And so I, I go look it up and uh, I always remember the Prince song is, uh, Tonight, we're going to party like it's 1999. But, of course, now if you go look up 1999 by Prince, it now says, tonight, I'm going to party like it's 1999. Like Prince is talking about himself in the first person. And it's so weird because this is a song that, like, people dance to at, like, dance clubs and events. And, uh, like, how is it that you are supposed to dance, like, how are you supposed to party like it's 1999 if only Prince is partying like himself, like it's 1999. So like the new lyrics don't make any sense at all. Right. And, and just the fact that so many, so many people are so familiar with the song, literally go out on the street, ask anyone how that song goes. And they will say, we're not, not I'm we're. So, um, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> call it a gut feeling, that you've given some thought as to what can be causing all of this. What are some of the theories that you have considered? Well, that is a great question. And it's very tough because especially when not all the scientific community accepts the Mandela effect is, you know, an actual phenomenon that's not like false memories. It's really tough to, you know, to narrow down what the answer is. But my two best guesses are either parallel universes or time travel. And uh, there, but I have like, when I'm listing out, you know, what makes sense, those two are what makes the most sense to me, or it could be a combination of both. Um, I'm not sure if it is either of those two because it, there could be something that a lot of people haven't thought of yet. But essentially with both, there's a theory that time may be wavy to where time is not exactly a straight line. And so if time is wavy, uh, it's possible that, you know, you could get uh, the timeline to bump at different spots. And that could potentially cause a change between different parallel universes or if they exist. Or that could uh, cause a change, you know, um, during two different timelines if it's time travel. I think both of those would work pretty similarly. But if it's time travel, it's probably a person going back in time and changing stuff rather than just multiple universes that existed forever. But both of those theories are very similar, and those are my two best guesses right now with the information and the Mandela effect I have as to what might be causing it. All right. All right. Follow up question. In your opinion, which theory do you think is just garbage? Um, the simulation theory, personally. And of course, false memories. But uh, false memories is something that I've totally dismissed. Um, the, the simulation theory, I don't think is it because, I, you know, I believe, you know, that every, you know, human being and animal, too, but I know every human being has free thoughts. And so if we can think for ourselves, then 
if it was a simulation, I would think we wouldn't be able to think for ourselves because something or someone would be controlling the simulation. And so because people have their own thoughts and ideals, I, I don't think it's a simulation that we live in. And I know a lot of people believe in the simulation theory. I'm just not buying that. I got you. Uh, and that, that's interesting. You, you say uh, you, you're, you don't buy the false memory. Um, I remember Rob Shelsky. He's an author who, who writes about Mandela Effect. He said something in his book that um, I, I remember I, I used a couple of times. I referred to it a couple of times during the season. He said to have a false memory, to misremember something is not uncommon. But how could so many people from various cultures, age groups, locations, gender, all get it wrong, but all get it wrong in the same exact way? Um, this is an important point and one that I think makes, um, makes the Mandela effect undeniable to so many people. That being said, though, uh, we have to admit, well, at least I, I have to admit that you know, false memory does play a role in this for for some people. You know, people are are forgetful. Details are hard to remember, especially over the course of someone's life. So, you said you you totally dismiss um, the idea of false memories or confabulation. Do you, you don't think it plays any part in it at all? Well, I do, but I don't think more than like twenty percent of the reported Mandela effects are false memories. I think that like all the big ones, like, like, for example, okay. Like if you told me like, like, uh, on this day, six months ago, was it rainy or was it sunny? I couldn't tell you, like, I don't have detailed memory of what the weather was like on a specific day, like six months ago. I do remember like on April 27th of 2011, when there was the major tornado outbreak, because that was a big deal in history. But to me, the Mandela effect is like that. Like small things, like whether it's rainy or sunny on a specific day, we will forget as time goes by. We, you, we can say what the weather's like yesterday or within the last couple of weeks, but we're going to forget what it's like six months ago. But stuff like tornado outbreaks and hurricanes, we are always going to remember them. And so to me, most of these big Mandela effects are like hurricanes and tornado outbreaks to where they are big deals. And something that big could not be a false memory, just the chances of everyone. And not to mention now when there are like over 600 national and, and the, you know, across the planet Mandela effects, not to mention all the personal ones. But when you're talking like 600 big Mandela effects where like you have thousands of people that all have the exact same what people will claim is a false memory, the chances of that happening 600 different times are like next to zero. You'd have to have like zero, like 10, 20 zeros before even a one on the percent chance that that would happen. That is just less scientifically likely than parallel universes or time travel existing, plain and simple. Well, yeah, and you, and you made a good point there uh, specifying the types of memories that are being affected. These things that are changing for people, they're not small, nondescript things. These are things from our childhood. They're, they're uh, companies that we loved and we frequented. All of these things, these specific memories, they meant something to us. So I think you made a really good point there of designating, you know, was it raining six months ago versus, you know, this, this other thing that's... Um, you know, totally important to you, like like a tornado outburst, like you would remember that. Absolutely. Well, do you think the Mandela effect happens to everyone across the board? Or do you think it only happens to certain people, a smaller section of society? And you know, that, that is a, a really good question. It's something that I've really debated on, because it seems like to me from, uh, you know, all my time on the Mandela Fett subreddit, you know, that I've spent being a moderator there, plus all my years of experience seeing the Mandela Fett, there are just so many people out there that just always say what the reality is now. And even after a flip-flop, they'll just insist on the new way, like, like they can't even recognize like a month ago that they literally said the opposite thing. And so I feel like as of right now, and again, I, this is this is a really gray area that, I, that there's still a lot of research that I think needs to be done on this. But it seems to me that only certain people are having these Mandela effects. 
And, you know, I don't know, like, obviously, if it's parallel universes, then uh, I guess that people from different universes, you know, could switch over at times, and that's how you get it. Like, there are multiple versions of, you know, everybody's self. Um, and then if it's time travel, I guess for some reason that only certain people can remember the changes. But again, I feel like that uh, with both parallel universes and with time travel, I feel like that uh, only some people having the Mandela effect would fit with either of those things. Right. And I, you know what, there is something, um, a part of Mandela effect that it, it surprises me that there are some people who will absolutely insist on this is the reality now, this is the way it's always been, when you're faced with something like residue. Now, tell my listeners, what, what is residue? And, uh, you know, what are some of your favorite examples of it? Well, residue, and I talked a little about this when we talked about Zach's speech just a little bit ago. But residue is when you have a, a, a well, a, you know, what some people would say is a false memory. Um, I don't believe it's false memories, but when you have a memory that is not what this reality says and you go look up your memory, it's not that you find nothing. You find a lot of things. Like sometimes you might think of something and then you, you search it on the Internet. You can't find anything. That right there might be a false memory, but with uh, so many of these Mandela effects, like with Zaxby's, for example, if you type in Zaxby's without the apostrophe and you search through newspaper articles, I can find over 40 newspaper articles that have Zaxby's right now without the apostrophe in it. And so it's little things like that where you have like newspaper articles and uh, things like that where people uh, remember it the other way. And these articles were written over several years. Like, like for example, like in 2017 and 2018, I can find a, a good like 15 articles from both of those years that has that so with no apostrophe. So uh, that tells me at that time that there were people that that's the way it was for them. So are those people going to get it wrong at that time? I don't think so. Like if you're writing an article for a newspaper, I think you are going to make sure that you have got the trademark and the spelling right on all your words. Right. Uh, the the residue really threw me, um, <laughs> really threw me on a couple of them that I, I just, I, I, I was shaking my head researching them because I just couldn't believe it. Um, I would have bet you money that it was a certain way and then it ended up not being. But then here are all these photos like, you know, such as the Statue of Liberty has a ton of great residue. Um, the Thinker statue is still, in my opinion, one of the best examples of a Mandela effect with its residue. That statue has changed six times for me now. And they've all been different slight changes, but I've seen the statue with its hand in a fist on its forehead, with its hand curved but open, not in a fist on its forehead. The same thing I've seen on the chin, where the hand is in a fist, you know, under the chin. I've also seen the hand open, uh, you know, with, you know, curved but open, no fist underneath the chin. And I've also seen the statue in both green and gray. So there's a Mandela effect with the color of the statue and with the position of the hand and if it's opened or in a fist. Yeah, it's such a strange one and uh, and is changing actually uh, quite a bit for different times at different people. That that'll be a discussion for another another time because that's a, it goes a little deep, but it's uh, it's it seems to be constantly constantly changing. Now, along with being a moderator on the Reddit subpage for Mandela Effect um, and uh, being very involved and informed on this subject, you also have a, a pretty busy life outside of it, too. Um, I follow you on the Instagram, and you are one of the biggest supporters of local business, often taking pics of your latest visit, and you'll make recommendations from their menus. Um, I, I know you're, you're hoping to run for office in a couple of years, and you run a live stream show over on Twitch, as you mentioned at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about your show, and uh, what, what kinds of things do you cover over there? What, what videos do you create? Okay, I, I have a lot to, to unpack there. That's like three different questions. You ask me all in one question. I'll start with my show, and then I'll talk a little bit more about my life besides that. So 
Um, as I said earlier, I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash RRRR, ZZZZ. So that's twitch.tv slash four lowercase R's and four lowercase Z's. And uh, on my Twitch channel, of course, I play a lot of games. I originally created my Twitch channel to live stream a game that I enjoyed called Pirate 101. But uh, then, like, within a year of me creating the Twitch channel, you know, I, I got into several other games. I got into Jackbox. I got into um, SimCity, uh, Marbles on Stream. Um, I've played chess on there. I've played Fortnite. But I've also made Mandela Effect videos. So um, I decided that, you know, there's more and more Mandela Effect, especially once Zaxby's happened. I'm like, I have to make videos on my Twitch channel of this. I, I have this channel. You know, I, I can't just uh, not document what I'm seeing. And so now I have, um, I believe I have videos on 17 different Mandela effects that are just big ones for me on my Twitch channel now. I also have a video where I talked about a, a story where I may have actually time traveled myself. That's a very interesting story, but uh, I've got that video available for people to watch. And uh uh, typically, you'll see me live about uh, 6 p.m. Central on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, unfortunately, the past few weeks, my main computer that I've been using to live stream, it ended up getting a virus, and so it's currently down. But hopefully in the next few weeks, I can have that fixed and that be back up. But if you're wondering why I've been absent from the live streams for a few weeks, that's why. Um, I have an Instagram, as you mentioned. Um, I post there literally every day, even on days I'm not live streaming. You can look me up, uh, um, uh, Instagram.com slash Rivers Rinsky Star. And this is all lowercase letters all together, R-I-V-E-R-Z-U-R-I-N-S-K-Y-S-T-A-R. So you can find me on Instagram there. And another thing, uh, as you mentioned, uh, back in 2020, I ran for a city council seat. You know, I was just 21 years old at the time. You know, I wanted to make a difference in my community. It was my first time out. I didn't win then, but I am hoping to run uh, again in the next elections. And uh, I want to mention one thing about my city council campaign, because during my campaign, I actually took the liberty to look up the business license uh, for uh Zaxby's and Chick-fil-A, and this is kind of interesting. I want to just mention this in the show. So um, my city has uh, two Chick-fil-A's and two Zaxby's. So the older of the two Zaxby's, uh, the, when they originally got the business license from my city, there was no apostrophe in it. It was just Z-A-X-B-Y-S, and that's how it is on the license. The newer of the two Zaxby's is listed on the business license as Z-A-X-B-Y apostrophe S. Now, for the skeptics, because I'm sure there'll be some skeptics listening and saying, you know, that might have been a typo. Well, Chick-fil-A, both the new and the old Chick-fil-A, list the spelling as C-H-I-C-K. So um, I would say that that is a little inconclusive because, you know, Zaxby's was that way, but not Chick-fil-A on the business licenses. But I did think that was interesting to see that the first of the two Zaxby's locations in my city, the license does not have the apostrophe. That was kind of cool that you had um, uh, access to to just look and and confirm, you know, verify. Um, okay, well, in regards to <laughs> your, uh, you have a very full plate. So, uh, in regards to you know your work and research with uh, the Mandela effect phenomenon, your um, ambitions for political office, um, all of the reviews and and really kind work that you do for local businesses. I, I, I just love that. Oh, oh, and the uh, severe weather coverage that you you do live. We forgot to mention that. Yes, we did. I'm a storm spotter for the National Weather Service. Um, I actually got trained to do that last fall. It was something that I'd actually thought about for uh, four years, but I just, with everything I had going on, I just never had the time to actually, you know, go and take the two hour class, but I finally had an opportunity. And uh, last fall I, I took the class and I became a certified storm spotter. And so I've started doing work uh, for the National Weather Service. And basically what I was trying to do, I'll talk a moment about that. I'm trying to look at storms out in the field to where I can look at videos or actually be out in the field myself and look at clouds. And I was trying to see like, what's a scud cloud or what's a funnel cloud, or I can even look for, you know, is a storm producing hail or not? Like they trained me to look at several different things. Uh, I had a fun experience learning to be a storm spotter. It 
it's a really fun class, and uh, I've been doing that now for about uh, seven months. The good news is tornadoes only happen maybe um, 10 days, maybe 12 out of the year, mainly in spring for us. So at least that work only occupies me maybe two weeks. So um, I can take two weeks of the year doing that, help out my community, you know, and uh, I'm hoping that, you know, the next time that there's a tornado outbreak that uh, maybe I'll be one of the ones that saves someone's life in my city by relaying what I'm seeing to the weather service. That's awesome. And uh, I just wanted to say you, you reached out a few weeks back. We'd had some some pretty uh, righteous storming and uh, storm system coming through here. And, and you checked in on me. And I, uh, I, I just really appreciate that. I thought that was so cool. Um, well, with all of that that you do, <laughs> what what does your family think about all this craziness? Well, I'm stressed a lot. And, you know, I, I know that, you know, my family has a lot they have to put up with with me. I know look, my family loves me. Um, but my mom and my grandmother, they really support what I'm doing. Um, but I know a lot of the work I do is stressful. But, you know, I'd like to think that everything I'm doing is helping somebody. And, uh, you know, my goal is in terms of, you know, running for political office and also being a storm spotter. The reason I was interested in both of those things was I really want to help my community. Look, I love my city and I want to do everything I can to help my city. And um, so it's awesome that I get to do that. Wonderful. Well, I think that's, uh, you know, your ambitions are very noble. You're doing it for the right reasons. And, uh, you know, I think you've probably already helped loads of people and don't even know it. So we are running uh, up to uh, a, a pretty high length, which is which is cool for this show. We usually wrap these. I know. <laughs> I have a lot to talk about, but there is one more I'll mention because this is important. Being in politics, um, last year I discovered a political Mandela effect, and I just want to throw this one in there. For anybody listening that may live in Virginia, I want you to think about your governor election last fall. Um, I remember Glenn Youngkin, who was uh, the Republican governor candidate, now governor of Virginia, having no G in his last name because as someone who's ran for political office, I follow politics across the country. And uh, I actually did a stream on that election night from Virginia. And so in order to make my graphics, I had to know how to spell his name. And uh, I had to memorize it because it was such a weird word. It was Y-O-U-N-K-I-N. That was like that until the weekend before the election. And all of a sudden, the Saturday before the Tuesday, everybody voted. All of a sudden, there's a G in his name where it's Y-O-U-N-G-K-I-N. And I'm like, wow, I wouldn't have had to memorize the weird spelling if it always had the G. Hmm. I mean, and of course, you would absolutely know that. Like you said, you had to know how to spell it leading all the way up to it. Correct. All right. Well, my final question for you tonight, River, and it's... A hard one. What is your favorite Mandela effect? Oh, that's a very hard one because with the Mandela effect, I feel like in so many ways it's just messed the world up. And, uh, you know, it's made things uh, more difficult uh, than they are because you're trying to figure out, you know, what something is. In terms of um, what my favorite Mandela effect is, I would have to say, and this is one that I actually discovered through another YouTuber called Spaced Out Productions, but there's this Mandela effect that uh, they made a video about that has to do with uh, the gas caps of cars. And um, I know that that's a very weird thing to say, but essentially gas caps uh, for Spaced Out Productions changed. And uh, now... uh, there's like an extra safety feature on gas caps that I don't ever remember uh, light spaced out productions does being there. And so um, if that is indeed a Mandela effect, that's one that, you know, potentially is making uh, the, your gas tank in your car more safer. And so that's what I would consider a good change, like a, a change that, you know, didn't mess up a spelling, you know, didn't mess up a photo, um, just something that may make cars a little bit safer. And if that's what happened, that's actually a useful one. Well, and I, li- I like that one. I like that one to close out the show because it's also um, not not a very uh, well-known one. So you, you've you educated some people tonight. All right. Well, before we wrap, uh, let my listeners know once again where they can find and follow you. 
a lot of places. So, of course, I'll start by saying, I'm, again, I'm Story RZ. That's S T A R R Y R Z. Um, on the, the Mandela Fett subreddit, just type in that. You can follow me there, find my post. Um, I'm R R R R Z Z Z Z on Twitch.tv. That's Twitch.tv slash four lowercase r's, four lowercase z's. And uh, my Instagram, Instagram.com slash Rivers Rinsky Star, all lowercase all together, R I V E R Z U R I N S K Y S T A R. So um, if you would follow me in any of those three places, I would appreciate it. Wonderful. Well, I will, of course, as I always do, I will link all of that below in the show notes for people's convenience so that they can easily follow you. Well, thank you so much, River. Thank you for coming on. This was fun. Thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, uh, anybody that leaves comments on the show. um, And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting anybody that follows me from listening to the show. So thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for tuning in week after week. God, this has been an incredible journey and one that no matter what happens, I will always look back on proudly and with abundant appreciation for you all. Please follow the show at Paranormal Girl Pod on any of the socials. Email me, paranormalgirlpod at gmail.com or via the submission page on the website, paranormalgirlpod.com. Send me your stories of the paranormal nature. I look forward to hearing from you. Stay tuned, you guys, for my conversation with Archbishop Plato Angelakis. That is a bonus episode that's going to be released this Friday. What a way to close out the season. Following that is the big conclusion, always a celebratory time around my house and staying true to the custom. Uh, You got to pick a beverage of choice and join me in celebration. Seltzer water to margarita, whatever you desire. Celebrate with me, yeah? You won't want to miss it. Unless you do want to miss it. In that case, why are you still listening? I see you. I see you. You closeted lover of Paranorm Girl, you. The thing I forgot to mention last week is I'm moving. It's a big deal for me. Louisiana, though we didn't always agree, well, we didn't always agree, and that is why I'm leaving you. Heading back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest, I'm incredibly excited, but unlike with seasons past, I had been intending to just meld right into season four. I'm so excited for it. Hope you guys are too, but with the packing and planning that is going to need to happen in the interim. Instead, I've got back-to-back-to-back guests lined up for y'all. We've got paranormal investigators, an empath, an expert on haunted items, some authors. It's a good lineup. I'm excited, dudes. So that is the announcement. Nothing crazy, just that the usual month between seasons I usually take is... Well, you can continue to expect some awesome, great content in interview style. Yippee! All right, that is all I have today. Until next time, stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.